This Week on ICN. The stories you should have heard, but didn't. Important facts not reported in the Norway shooting. Government workers more likely to die of natural causes than be fired. Police abusing video camera wielding citizens again. How free is your state? Those stories and more next on Informed Citizen News. Hello and welcome to ICN, Informed Citizen News, week of August 1st, 2011. The major story last week was the murder spree in Norway. We will not focus here on the details that are widely available in the mass media, but rather on those points of the tragedy that have not received particular focus. The shooter publicly admitted to facts that he planted a bomb, killed seven, and then proceeded to a small nearby island to shoot and kill 68 more people and wound about 90. The U.S. has all too often experienced mass murders. Events such as Columbine, the Long Island train tragedy, Virginia Tech, Fort Hood, and the list goes on. In each case, the perpetrator is determined to carry out their murderous plan and in many incidents, wanting to die after causing as many casualties as possible. Law enforcement rarely prevents these incidents and cannot adequately respond to effectively limit the casualties. By the time law enforcement arrives, most of the carnage has already taken place. We have stated on previous broadcasts that whether you like it or not, you are responsible for you and your family's security. In this country, the Second Amendment reinforces our inalienable right to protect our life and the lives of our families through the proper use of firearms. Norway's law enforcement is substantially unarmed. Patrol officers have firearms locked up in their vehicle. In addition, the officer requires permission from a superior in order to access it in case of a potential violent incident. On the island in Norway, there were about 600 teenagers along with a handful of adults. There was only one plainclothes person responsible for security, and sadly, he was unarmed. He was one of the 68 that was murdered. The small 26-acre island, roughly the size of one of our public elementary schools, most likely had not experienced any previous violent crimes. Although you cannot live your life in fear, these types of murder sprees or other violent crimes can happen anywhere and at any time. Schools, restaurants, trains, shopping malls, and on the street in your neighborhood. It's the bad guys who choose the time and the place to carry out their evil actions. You were left to only react when the occasion occurs. Do you believe in the case of the Norway killings that the parents of these murdered children wished that the security guard was armed? If adequately trained, he may have been able to stop the killer in his tracks, or at least delay him. History has taught us it is to our detriment to ignore that there are people in this world intent on doing violence. In the best of cases, the police are usually about 10 minutes away. In the Norway murders, it took about 90 minutes after the first shot for law enforcement to arrive on the island. Some may ask, who would have thought that a kids' camp on an isolated island in one of the most peaceful countries in the world would see such brutality? The more appropriate question is, how many of these incidents need to occur in schools, trains, restaurants, and shopping malls before good citizens take the initiative for their own security? In the United States, workers employed by the federal government are more likely to die of natural causes than to be laid off or fired. This according to an article in USA Today. The analysis for the budget year 2010 showed that one out of every 200 government employees ended up fired. It stands in stark contrast to the private sector where about one out of every 30 employees was fired. The 1800 Employee Federal Communications Commission and the 1200 Employee Federal Trade Commission didn't lay off or fire a single employee last year. The job security rate for all federal workers was 99.43 percent last year and nearly 100 percent for those on the job more than a few years. HUD spokesman Jerry Brown says his department's low dismissal rate shows a skilled and committed workforce. Quote, we've never focused on firing people and we don't intend to start now. We're more focused on hiring the right people. On a somewhat related note, there were 77,000 government workers who earned more than the governors of the state in which they worked. For example, Colorado had 10,875 federal employees who made more than the $90,000 paid to Colorado Governor Ritter. These findings were part of a congressional report 
requested by Senator Tom Coburn of Oklahoma. An indication of how bad real estate is, mortgage insurer PMI is offering underwater borrowers incentives to stay in their homes. Companies like PMI issue mortgages in case of default. Their pilot program will reward borrowers who remain current on payments for the next few years by paying 10 to 30 percent of their unpaid balance on the home loan. Or putting it another way, they are offering a smaller deferred cash settlement paid to the borrower in a few years as opposed to paying the bank a larger insurance settlement this year on what would be a certain default. Where the federal government throws billions and even trillions of taxpayer money at the problem with little success, private companies and individuals who have skin in the game have all the incentives to work out a deal. This PMI pilot program is a creative approach by a private company to mitigate their mistakes by underwriting too many risky loans. If the government had not interfered in the private market, these private companies would have been motivated to be more creative during the earlier part of the real estate collapse. Here's a story of government interference in the market. Starting August 1st, the Federal Housing Administration will allow unemployed borrowers to miss mortgage payments for a full year, forestalling the foreclosure process. The extended grace period only applies to FHA-backed loans, which are usually given to low- and middle-income borrowers and represent about 14% of all active mortgages and roughly 25% of new mortgages. These loans are underwritten by the taxpayer, and the FHA tells borrowers it's okay not to pay. We have been covering stories where citizens videotaping law enforcement in action while on a public street have been harassed, abused, and even arrested. Take a look at two recent incidents. You that offended you. I'm behind us officers when we're doing a, a traffic stop. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. We'll stand in your house. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. I'm, I'm going to stay more, in my. I'm going to ask you one more time. We don't feel safe with you standing right behind us when we're doing a traffic stop. I'm going to ask you to go into the house. What? No. I, yes. It's my right to be in my yard, and I'm sorry that so you don't you're, feel you're, safe. All I have is a camera. I'm clearly wearing nothing. I have no weapons. It does not matter. What you're you're not listening to our orders right now we don't feel safe with you standing behind us you're not moving even a foot further back you're going to be you're going to be do you want arrest. me to move a foot further back on, you're going to be under arrest i already warned you i will move a foot further back i don't i'm not going to go inside my house i feel like i need you're the fresh air right now well, i'm arresting someone for not following police orders when we're asking I, i'm asking back. you what it the order very simple i don't understand I your order you not stand behind us okay you, you didn't you're ask me to this. not stand behind yes. you okay listen i'm not going to explain myself to you what you're going to do is you're going to end up going to jail i'm trying to give you a warning okay i'm going to back up you know what you're going to go to jail that's just not right what is it called no 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 stay right here stay i'm right sorry here. I'm not doing anything. Can I help you, sir? No, just observing. Do you live here? Nope. Why do I have to turn it off? I'm perfectly within my legal rights to be able to do this. Turn off the camera for me. I'm perfectly within my legal rights to do this, sir. Listen, turn off the camera for me. No, no sir, I, I am in within my legal rights to here. do this. If I do you, live here. You don't I, live I just here, said dude. I live here. Get over hey, here. Hey, get on the ground. What the hell are you doing, man? man? What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing, man? On your stomach. God damn it. Stop it. Hey. What are you kicking the camera for? On your stomach. What the fuck? Don't resist me. Although the district attorney will rarely prosecute citizens videotaping police in public, the individual is generally taken by force, placed in a patrol car, booked, and will spend a few hours in jail. In the case of Mr. Crooks, he also ended up with some cuts and bruises. Police are public servants, and they have no legal right to force you to turn off your video camera while filming them in public. 
Emily Good is planning to file suit against the Rochester Police Department, and the officer in Mr. Crook's incident was just found in violation of multiple Las Vegas PD regulations, and a lawsuit is likely to follow. The sad part is, it's the taxpayer who has to foot the bill for these abusive cops, and those in law enforcement that do their job honorably take a hit to their reputation. And a new website, copblock.org, has recently been created to report and track law enforcement abuse of civil liberties. The following story had several odd elements that we don't know where to begin, so we'll let the victim explain in his own words. Take a look. This is what they did to my door. At 6 this morning, a SWAT team surprised Kenneth Wright at his front door. In my underwear. In my underwear. Before I get to the door, I hear him say, hit it. And I get ready to hit the door, and they hit the door. It almost hit me. So I said, hold on. They hit it again. I said, hold on. But the SWAT team busted in, taking right. They come grab me by my neck and drag me out my house to right there in the grass. Thrown to the ground and handcuffed, law enforcement then searched his house. And they put me in the backseat of a police car for over six hours. From 6 o'clock to 1230, they had me handcuffed in the back of a police car with nothing on but my ripped up underwear that they ripped in the yard. Wright says they also woke his three children, holding them for two hours. But they failed to find their quarry, Wright's estranged wife. Wright later complained to Stockton's mayor and police, but the city pointed to the U.S. Department of Education. They say you owe a student loan and you got to pay it. I just had my door kicked in because of this. They put this here and they said we fixed the hole. The hole is the least of my worry. Wright says all he wants is an apology and a new door. And he has this warning to former students that the federal government's coming to collect in a big way. People that have student loans out there or people that owe money, please pay your bills. Take care of your credit. Uh, if you don't believe me, <laughs> this could be you one morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. In Stockton, Lee Painter, News 10. The questions that come readily to mind are, why is the Federal Department of Education serving a warrant on a citizen over a student loan? normally a civil matter. Why did they use the local SWAT team to serve the warrant? Why did the police and city officials authorize farming out their SWAT team to a federal agency? A quote often attributed to Thomas Jefferson, when governments fear the people, there is liberty. When people fear the government, there is tyranny. Finally, how free is your state? We have posted a link to George Mason University's Mercatus Center, who published a report on the status of liberty within each of the 50 states. Their report appears to be absent of political agendas and rates the states on levels of government regulation and economic freedom. They also include whether each state has become more free or less free since their last report. Here are the top five and bottom five states in the Union. New Hampshire came in as the most free, and not surprisingly, New York came in last. It's worth a look to see where your state ranks on the list. Thanks for joining us this week. From all of us at Informed Citizen News, have a great week.